On my list of least favorite anti-missionaries, I think Tobias Singer ranks number one, at least right now. The guy has a charming personality and is a great speaker, no doubt. But he also reminds me a lot of a used car salesman. He'll butter you up, tell all sorts of funny stories, and get you to like him. If you're a Jew, he is out to get you by hook or by crook. One of Tobias' favorite tricks is his arbitrary use of translations. If the English helps his case, he'll use that. He will say something like, The King James Bible, which is not the slightest bit sympathetic to Judaism, says such and such. When the Hebrew is more convenient, he uses the Hebrew, and generally he prefaces it with, You don't read Hebrew very well, do you? What's worse is when he uses the fact that he knows Hebrew and his audience does not, so that he can give a sort of argument from authority. Here's an example. In his answers to audience questions in his section of the book, Let's Get Biblical, page 283 to be exact, Singer responds to a question regarding Isaiah 53.10. The questioner asks about the phrase, His days will be prolonged, and wonders why the phrase cannot apply to Jesus, since Jesus was raised from the dead to an immortal body, and is technically still incarnate, as he will be when he returns. He has been alive as a human for about 2,000 years, were his days not prolonged. After bellyaching about Christian misinterpretation of the psalm which represents Israel, and after mentioning that the Hebrew word zera means only literal children and never metaphorical children, such as in Isaiah 57.3, which says, Are you not children of transgression, the seed, Zerah, of deceit? Oops. And of course, before his attack on Nicaea and the divinity of Jesus, there was a paragraph sandwiched in there where he gave an actual response to the question that's being asked. This response, however, does little to relieve their problem. To begin with, the Hebrew words Ya'ari Ya'amim, meaning long life, in this verse do not even refer to an eternal life which has no end, but rather to a lengthening of days which eventually come to an end. These Hebrew words are therefore never applied in Tanakh to anyone who wants to live forever. In fact, the words Ya'ari Ya'amim appear a number of places throughout the Jewish scriptures, including Deuteronomy 17.20, Deuteronomy 25.15, Proverbs 28.16, and Ecclesiastes 8.13. In each and every one of these verses, where this phrase appears, the words refer to an extended mortal life, not an eternal one. When the Jewish scriptures speak of eternal resurrected life, such as in Daniel 12.2, the Hebrew words lechaye olam are used. Now this is a butchery of grammar. The term ya'arik yamim does not mean long life, as the word ya'arik is not even an adjective. It's the imperfect tense of a, or prefix conjugation of the verb arach, which is Strong's number 748. So the term ya'arik yamim does not mean long life, but means will prolong his, her, or its days. It means exactly the same thing in Hebrew as it does in English. It means that the days will be made longer. How much longer? Generally, when the term is used in English, it refers to a lengthening of days, which eventually come to an end. It is very rarely the term we use in English to mean make someone live forever. Generally, we use the term for that, give eternal life, or perhaps immortalize. When someone has an extra year to live, we say that their life has been prolonged. When someone has an extra 10 years to live, we say their life has been prolonged more, right? So if God wanted to prolong someone's life or someone's days to the maximum extent, what would he do? Do you think he'd give the person eternal life, right? Besides, if Tobias Singer is right and Isaiah 53 is about Israel, does this mean that Israel is supposed to experience a lengthening of days which eventually come to an end? I sure hope not. Shalom Aleichem.